Valerie Devereaux, Town Council. Uh, Derek Converse, uh, parent. Jeff Holden, citizen. Tom Dunham, citizen. If you all want to move up a little bit so you can hear, feel free to scoot your chairs up. So I just would like to um, review the, the charge uh, for the committee. Um, the, our charge is to review the needs assessment report, uh, determine priorities, determine the size and scope of a future project and bond, and make a re recommendation to the school board. So um, we should keep that charge in mind as we continue with our work. Uh, so to start, I did want to, we got some good news. Um, we had, uh, we submitted uh, 12 revolving renovation projects to the state, and I think you've probably heard about us talking about these and saying, well, if we get, if we get money for these, um, that would be great. Uh, we did end up uh, getting six projects awarded uh, for a total of $390,429. So those are um, items that were in the needs assessment report, um, and you have uh, a copy of them um, in the packet. Pond Code, uh, middle, the middle school and the high school, um, each got uh, awarded funding uh, for, and these are mostly, I think they all were safety, one structure, um, but those, the three, um, the first three were um, towards the science labs and putting showers and eye washes um, on the plumbing for those things in our science labs, which is a safety issue. Um, the next one at the high school was um, in the, for the metal shop, um, indoor quality issues, and there was also a um, a lift uh, that uh, will make the shop ADA compliant. Um, there was a roof structure reinforcement at the high school, um, and the intercom and public address system at the high school. Um, that is a safety issue because um, when Jeff or whoever makes an announcement about going into a lockdown or whatever's going on, every place in the building doesn't have access to hearing. Uh, hearing those things. So um, this will expand our and improve our intercom and public address system so that no matter where you are in the building, you will hear announcements about what's going on. Um, so definitely a safety issue. Um, do you explain the 70-30 of these projects yes. and the bonding? Yes. So this, um, the deal is that it's 30% forgiveness rate. So the 30% forgiveness, essentially a grant, is $117,128.70 for this amount on the $390,000. Zero percent financing, it will be a five-year payback, period, $54,660.06 per year after the completion of the construction. So um, if you look further in the packet, you'll, you'll um, see a more detailed explanation of what each project is. So, um, I think you can look at those things. But 
Um, do you have specific instructions from the state that we have to follow about uh, putting, uh, we have, are in the process of putting out um, a request uh, for qualifications, and then we will have to interview and uh, select art an architect and uh, design uh, company, engineer. Mm -hmm. And um, then we'll have to put out bids for the actual So they'll do the design, and then we'll put, put out the bids for the actual work um, to be done. The good thing about all of these projects is they can be done while our students are in school, so we don't have to mis um, not misplace, but <laughs> displace um, a large amount of students. Um, or we don't have to wait till the weather clears. Um, they, can, they can get started as soon as we get the funding. So um, this was very exciting to us. We were told, oh, you probably won't get anything. Right. So we feel like um, this is great for the students. They awarded us six projects. You'll remember that um, we submitted a little bit under a um, million dollars worth of projects. So we got almost half. So so we were happy about that. So starting with some good news is, is always good. And we can take these off any uh, renovations <coughs> might have plans in the future because they will be completed. So. Um, last March, if some of you were uh, involved in this, we had over 100 people from the town um, involved in a, what we call the future search. We brought people together and talked about um, sort of the history of education, Cape Elizabeth, what some of our struggles and our successes were, our trials and our sorries, um, and then really talked about where we wanted education to go in the future. We had charts all over the place with lots and lots of data. Um, following that, um, in several school board workshops um, with some uh, volunteer citizens uh, that helped us, we really analyzed and synthesized all the data and um, looked for themes and um, uh, really themes that, uh, that were carried through and uh, the school board adopted, wrote and adopted uh, five goals and you have those goals in front of you and they were adopted in September of this year. Um, these really reflect the synthesis and analysis of all that data um, and um, really represent all of, hopefully, all and most, most of all of the, um, the thoughts that came out at that future search workshop. Um, meanwhile, the administrative team is working on some outcomes um, for each of these goals that will be taken back to the schools and each school will develop uh, their plan for how they're going to meet these goals and the outcomes. So you'll notice the last two um, goals. One is uh, safe, sustainable, and faci effective facilities. Our schools will be safe and effective facilities. They will be updated and maintained to meet the needs of students and staff in accordance with long-term financial planning. That seems to um, relate to the work that we're all here to do. And environmental responsibility. The school department will prioritize environmental responsibility, including stewardship and sustainability. So um, our work tonight is going to really focus on those two goals and uh, lead us into the future. So I'm going to turn it over to you. All right. Well, welcome, everyone. Um, we thought that we've had the opportunity to gain a lot of facts to be in a larger group, and we thought it might be nice to break up into smaller groups, have some more intimate conversations with specific guidelines, and then come back and report it out. Um, and above or on your agenda here are the four questions that we'd like you to contemplate and discuss and be prepared to report back in a little bit of time. Um, it's what does safe mean? What does effective facilities mean? What is our environmental responsibility as a district? And what is our financial responsibility to the district and the community? And so when we think of those, um, you know, we'd like you to have the idea of the information that you've gained, the needs assessment that you've read, um, the, the facts that you've heard, and, and a little bit less of um, 
opinions and more th thinking of these strategic goals in mind because these strategic goals reflect as best we can the will of the district and the townspeople. Um, as Donna mentioned, you know, there was about 100 people that came together and spent quite a bit of time formulating these ideas and synthesizing them down to this. So as best we can, this is the will of the district. And so based on this uh, strategic plan goal based on the needs assessment and the information we've been given by the professionals here, what, how would you define these four questions? How would you answer these four questions? So we're going to break up into groups um, and go out and report. We've got some sticky notes and some like big post-it sticky notes. Oh, some pads. Some, some pads. There's some pads some and pencils. pencils and all that stuff. Um, we'll give you about 20 minutes or so is what we decided um, and the best way we figured to do this is to just count around we're going to hopefully have uh, seven groups so we'll count by seven I'll start this sometimes goes well and sometimes so here's what I'm going to say I've done this a lot of times two hints one remember your number if you think you're going to get confused write the number down that's a little help to hint. and two pay attention just for 30 seconds here while we do this all right I'm one. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, and then four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 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 it doesn't look like there's a lot of tables, so you can just move your chairs and go sit in a corner and find your own place, or pull the tables away, whatever you need to do. Let's do it later. Well, you guys can find your own space. You're not kids. Yeah, who are the ones? All right, let's all the ones move over by Elizabeth to start with. Who are the twos? Let's all meet over by Jeff over there. How about threes? Oh, two. Are you a two? I'm a two. All right. All the threes will meet by Donna. How about four? We'll meet up here. Okay, by Peter. Five. Who else is a five? Let's go by DJ. Sixes. We'll be with Andy somewhere. Who is working? And seven. So you're answering You got it. Four more questions. Yeah. So the timing is about ten to seven. We'll try to meet around. Oh, really? Hi. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. So as we come together, um, you're welcome to just go back to your regular regular seat, and then hopefully there's a spokesperson for each group. And I'll go around and we'll ask the question and then I'll call on group one and group two and group three and Donna here is going to write it all out since there's no place to put it up and then once it's all written out we'll post it for people to look. But hopefully that was good discussion. Um, is everybody back? It looks like it. All right. So the first one was what to say and how do we want to do it? We have a few. Should we say all of what we have? Just one. Oh, we're just going to choose one. Okay, uh, what does safe mean? I thought this was interesting. Um, too much visibility from the outside in, meaning there's too many windows. I think there was the reference to um, like Pond Cove area and being able to see into the cafeteria and the... So that would be unsafe? That would be unsafe. Okay, so not having too many windows. Too many windows. Or maybe places. Yeah, in the wrong place. Privacy? Privacy. <laughs> Privacy. Yeah. Okay. Okay, number two. two. So, ours is a little bit more uh, complicated. I to <laughs> try to pull out one of them. Just one. Um, it's sort of a uh, three part. Uh, they kind of go together, though, okay. so I feel like I need to say it all. Oh. So, for us, being in a safe environment meant both stru I mean, structural safety, number one, um, se secure, or security, 
so doors and entries and that sort of thing, um, designed for risks that our children face, and three, the school climate. Students should feel valued and welcome. And that there's a tension there between those three, but those are three important things. So Group three, thank you. Uh, group three, so we had a lot of thoughts. Um, I guess I'll say uh, the flow of students through the building, like not feeling um, too crowded or too tight in hallways mm -hmm. or in any of the spaces. The size of the space for the occupants. Number four. So dark. Oh, oh, you're right. I switched. That's why. I was one and then I switched. Oh, so who was one? I did write my number. So what was one? We're one. I was not going to argue with you, Mother. But I'm like, we're one. All right, I'll be four now. That's right to this one. So we have sort of. We, yeah, so we already did the overcrowding. We, yeah. So we have the overcrowding, not just in the hallways, but in the, the classrooms. Their students are spilling out into the halls, they're so crowded. And the cafeterias. And the cafeteria, and all the, all the spaces, overcrowding. Right. Number five. Ours was looking at how, uh, looking at what does safe mean, and kind of looking at from the best practices um, if operation of a facility, considering the compliance level in relation to the laws and requirements from the state, federal, and so on and so forth, as well as security levels, uh, best practices, avoidance of intruder events environmental safety within the facility and in relation to all the regulations that one needs to one that. That's just one <laughs> that. <laughs> What am I supposed to write? <laughs> it's, it's hard to choose one. Yeah. I know. We'll, we'll go around again. Right? Choose, choose one. Yeah. Uh, We're going to get the same one. Well, a lot of that has to do with the required. Why don't you say yeah, 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 yeah. Compliance. 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 Full compliance. Full compliance. Full Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Number five. Number six. Most of our stuff was around, uh, you know, the, the physical plant. So uh, I'll just say you've taken all reasonable steps to reduce threats. We had other things here too, but it's in general, I think it was. Taking all reasonable steps to reduce threats. Oh, okay. Take care of reduce. Right, and number seven, that was us. Um, we talked about safety inside the building, um, looking specifically at the cafetorium um, for employees and children, the sort of various levels that the <coughs> students have to walk up and down, and that uh, the uh, folks working in the kitchen did as well, I think. What would you call like that? Occupational safety? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's all I think. Occupational safety. Occupational safety. Yeah. That's what we call it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we said. Thank you. Thank you. If you want a camera, we'll be okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so you were seven. So back Five to one. number one. Air quality. Safe, healthy air. Number two. So I, I get all of ours. <laughs> nice deep package. Number three. Um, so this is just seeing if there's any that we missed? Yeah. Okay. If there's um, anything else you'd like to add. Uh, I guess for the students to feel free from anxiety and insecurities as they enter the building. Number three. Four. Um, 
I'm going to add on, and you don't necessarily need to write this, but when you talked about occupational safety, I thought it was interesting. We had Peter in our group, and he informed us that Pond Cove in the middle school, if there's a fire alarm, they can't hear it in the kitchen. In the kitchen. Um, and that there's no lights in there. And so there was a time when something happened. We had a lockdown. There was a lockdown. Yeah. And the kitchen they didn't had no idea. They were still serving lunch. So you don't Are necessarily. You alerts? Uh, sure. And we noticed that it, it's going to be helped in the high school with this grant, but that's not helping Pond Cove in the middle school. All right, so five. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you don't want to add another don't chapter? Okay. Uh, so with code compliance, you're talking, are you, you, are you even encompassing like no fire and emergency no egress and all that stuff? All that. All right. Lots. We have a nice story about a kid that has to be carried out of the building because like you don't have appropriate egress for her, but okay. Yeah, that's so much All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next number six. Yeah. Are there technology solutions to make the building safer instead of just physical plant changes? Somebody wondered that. Mm. All right, number seven. Uh, we talked about traffic flow in going throughout the parking lots with the buses, mm -hmm. the, um, um, the circle, and, and also and delivery. The yeah, and delivery. Yeah. Let's do one more round and see if people have anything else that they'd like to add. Go ahead. Um, so we would aspire to um, safe spaces for recess that are um, fenced and not easily accessible to any stranger off the street. More than one. Okay. Uh, group two, We're still good? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> group three, they had a good you guys are good? Statement. Doing it. They had a vision statement. Okay. Uh, group four, I think we're pretty set. Everything has been said. So group five. Well, the other thing that comes to mind is following best practices and enforcing them regarding the safety and security of the buildings. Okay. You, you know what I mean? As far as like, if you say you're gonna have a lockdown building, that means that there's an issue holding the open door in the back of the building. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. make, and, and having a little buying on that. Mm -hmm. uh, six. I think we've covered it. Okay. And seven. Mm -hmm. um, we also talked about um, I guess safety being healthy. Um, so the healthiness of the schools, so asbestos, the various chemicals and the floor cleaners and stuff. Um, and then also um, noise level in the cafeteria, the cafeteria, um, rapid consumption of food, music room, music room, noise level, and you said it, but the ra I just want to make sure they heard it, the rapid consumption of uh, lunch time. That, that's not healthy, and it's probably not safe either. <coughs> yeah. And then I don't know if you're going to say it, Kimberly, but the other one. Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? One other thing hasn't been mentioned is the school resource presence, the, the school resource officer, mm -hmm. what they do, how effective they are, where they are on a daily basis. Did we address this in, in the ADA or what you were referring to, Elizabeth? Um, we have it written down as optimal um, layout for evacuation in emergencies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's it separate. Could, it, it could be improved and it's, it's failed in certain parts of the buildings. Yeah. Anybody 
else up ten? Okay, what those so special the facilities that are affected? <coughs> number one, um, meet. I'm going to wait for Don to be here. <laughs> um, effective facilities meet the current and future educational needs of students. Our first one sort of builds on that support uh, teaching and learning in all the various fields and subject matters. So sort of recognizing mm -hmm. there may be different designs for different. Mm -hmm. Number three. Uh, we had one uh, so visitors can comfortably observe uh, the, the teaching in the classroom. Visitors can comfortably observe the space of the So, more So number, are you ready? Uh -huh. number four, we had um, ADA compliance. Um, if we're not ADA compliant, it's not effective for those kiddos. Uh, number five. We were very similar to other people as far as uh, helping us sort of uh, be its effectiveness. Effectiveness is defined by being able to help <coughs> the goals or achieve the goals. Identified uh, for the community. So that was probably a big part of it. And then we're also looking at providing the educators with the tools to be able to do the best of their abilities to, to obtain the best results from the students. So that's be the bricks and mortar or the flexibility of that, but you being able to adapt to them. We had several. I'll start with, do the facilities match the professional needs of the users and have the appropriate amount of flexibility? Um, we talked about um, the effective facilities, um, the energy that kind of like the psychological impact of effective facilities, um, promoting and reflecting excellence, supporting um, retention and attraction of teachers and new families to the community. Promoting positive intellectual, what was the next word? Uh, <laughs> so we'll look at the tape. <laughs> <laughs> promoting, um, I, th I think I said something about promoting and reflecting um, excellence. Okay. I, I think one of the things, just to, just to add to it, one of the things we touched on was we're not very <coughs> effective beyond our you know, blue ribbon status at encouraging other new families to come in because of the of the building's states. You know, it's it's not it's not a selling point. And in order for us to like maintain um, you know enrollment, I think that's part of being effective. Yeah. And holding on to excellent staff, I think we've talked about yeah. in that as well that um, well, we're a great place 
to work, there are other great places that maybe have um, or offer more from a, from a special standpoint that we can offer people better. Number one, do you have anything else to add? Parking, parking and traffic functionality. and by that we mean function appropriately, like heating, HVAC, plumbing, that sort of thing. It's a comfortable environment for working. That's also like flow in the hallways. Right. And you could even take that into the cafeteria so that there's not different levels of effective space. Uh, number five. Six. Making buildings more energy efficient, just generally operationally cheaper to run. That, that, that came up last time. I think when you uh, told us, or someone said that the Scarborough High School was being run at a much less cost, the brand new high school versus this facility here. The other thing we have was you know, making facilities available 12 months a year for the whole town. to elaborate on the easy to maintain. We talked about how Perry has said it in one of the prior meetings, he feels like it's playing whack-a-mole. And so therefore that's not effective maintenance of the buildings. If you're just putting out fires and you, you need to have a system in place that you know is proactive. Anything else that anybody wants to add? Yep. Go ahead. Um, we had talked about um, uh, requiring what's necessary, look what, what we need to accomplish um, currently, but with a significant eye to the future of you know, what, how things are going to look in the years and facility that can um, support. And we also had a conversation about, um, <coughs> so like, what does effective mean to you? It doesn't mean satisfactory, and which led to what does satisfactory mean? And, and so I feel like that could have been another question. What does satisfactory mean to you? And to us, it, it, it means numerous things, but being effective is, is definitely um, above satisfactory. It's not whack-a-mole. It's not whack-a-mole. Yeah. <laughs> Andy. Uh, Derek, our resident bid guy in the building business, pointed out that a lot of times you have to spend a little bit more money initially in order to save money in the long run. And that's something to keep in mind when it comes to building construction. 
Yeah, along the lines of low maintenance. Yeah, Perry would love that, I'm sure. <laughs> <coughs> Did we miss anything, Tim, on the, on the, on the uh, effective side? Okay. So next up is environmentally responsible <coughs> as a district. Um, we need to work towards greener buildings. <coughs> which means energy efficiency in all the different ways that we can leverage as possible. Um, it could mean uh, more windows, actually, and less use of elect electricity. It could mean more insulation. It could mean whatever, you know, better HVAC, all sorts of things, but just, you know, really a push towards greener buildings. Our first one was kind of a general principle as well. Is we recognize that our, the schools are the heart of our community, the largest employer, the largest buildings, the most used, and so we should see this as a challenge to the environmental leaders. stewardship in the students at the occupants of the building. Just sort of use it as an educational tool to show students commenting on what Andy and Derek were talking about, efficient facilities that are environmentally friendly and have cost savings. <laughs> efficient facilities that are environmentally <coughs> friendly and have cost savings. Environmental responsibility of maximizing the physical plant and what you have to work with. And yeah, Jamie mentioned that town council may be uh, playing with the idea of a climate action goal for the town. In which case, that that might be a normal pass through for the schools if there's a climate action goal that is assumed by the town council on behalf of the town. Really, uh, planning for the future, green products and practices, more sustainability. <coughs> One, I think it was mentioned, but I don't see it on there, sort of subset of one, which is that we, are, we use this opportunity to educate. Someone said that was on it. I would to educate mindfulness about energy efficiency, usage, conservation with our students and the public. The idea being that whatever project we go forward with and should incorporate environmental responsible goals, and we should showcase that. It's a great opportunity to educate and for people to, especially our students, to see what we're doing and see how it's important. Uh, 
Brian, do you have anything else? I think it's a reduced environmental footprint, conscious of material. It's environmental footprint, she said, and then the material. But I think you really said that last time. Yeah, that's what I think we're all set. The challenge of building new versus maintaining the existing, mm -hmm. as far as the whole energy needed to produce one, you know, to, to bring all the materials in to build a brand new building, demoing the old, kind of looking at that whole carbon footprint exchange. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Uh, no, I don't think so. No? No, I don't think we have that part of the program that they think has been covered and practicing and teaching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I just want to have one more just because one of our members specifically mentioned it's related to carbon footprint, but the reuse of facilities as much as possible to reduce landfill. And it gets to what Matt was saying. I think it's a variation of what Matt was saying. So short, though, so something one of our members said. So we use the facility as much as possible. It's really getting at the idea of, of not plant building. Mm -hmm. So Carrie mentioned kind of the possible. difficulty around the sustainability aspect living in a coastal community that um, because of the climate, because of the environment that we live in, the, the um, resources that we have to expend to maintain, whether it be gained or whatever, is significantly higher than other communities. Yeah, it's products better. we choose. Yeah. yeah. So develop a long-range plan. <clears throat> of careful and responsible investing. In our building or assets, whatever you want to. <clears throat> that is considerate of the community. And I would add a benefit to the community as well. Good. Good, so we also had that, so we can check that out. <laughs> Our first one was ensure that taxpayer dollars are spent wisely and be good stewards. the needs of the students versus the ability of the residents to shoulder the tax burden. So I think we said all those things just in slightly different words. So it's all there. Similar vein, but just increase, you know, maximizing the highest and best effect for the best of our facilities. That's pretty broad. Say it again, uh, maximize. maximize the highest and best effectiveness of our facilities. And we can also discuss the same, you know, maximizing the best results, receiving the highest one result from investment public funds. Like, you know, 
The uh, a bunch of things here. Remind ourselves of the one town concept and the collaboration with the town council is critically important. Um, really striving for uh, long term planning, not short sighted vision. Um, Staggering the financial burden. We also talked about um, the um, trying to uh, come up with some stability of cost. Um, I, I think again, you know, kind of looking to the maintenance, but um, you know, unexpected costs. Um, you just don't, you know, it's hard to forecast what what your spending is going to be, but I think. Um, that's good financial. Stewards have the more of a, a stable vision of the cost of running our facility. So can I add to what you said about spending wisely, um, uh, more so that things last long term versus short term band aid fixes? Yeah. Yes, and ours was, um, so it, it's financial responsibility, but also responsibility um, to this group and this process, which was, um, we hope that there is a long-term commitment by the entire town to whatever plan is developed so that we all agree on something that is sustainable that will actually happen if we develop this 20-year this plan. That whoever comes and goes from different leadership positions, that there's a commitment that we've made <clears throat> and that we're going to fall through with our plans and investments. So that kind of connected to the income concept as well as uh, a job change and new people can step in. <coughs> not just this way, but it's this because, way. I mean, that can cause a lot of instability too, not just sort of like, oh, we yeah. put in all this time and we got through you know, phase one, but just any financial instability of that sort of stuff. Yeah, one of ours was, um, in addition to the bonding we may have to do, is to make sure we're looking for opportunities for other funding opportunities as we go through the process, through grants or fundraising or efficiency meetings going out there, but just other financial opportunities. Um, consider uh, all citizens, not just the ones who have schools, but um, so that they would be on board with whatever. Matt, do you have more? Uh, financial modeling around debt structure or long term planning. There's obviously a lot of concern about the long-term price tag of this. And I think there was some discussion that we shouldn't be thinking three to five years out. We should be possibly thinking 10 years out, particularly as it relates to the possibility that the political winds in Augusta might change and there might be some money that might become available in the out years for some of the work we might want to do. Overspending and not wasting money, spending money that will last into the future. And I think the not overspending and not wasting money was along the same lines of um, sometimes you have to spend a little money to save.
Anybody else? Yeah. Somebody mentioned, you know, just the word investment versus expense. I mean, investment is, we think of things in a much longer term way versus expenses, you know, we think of just fixing things and then all of a sudden 15 years down the line we could look down the road back and say, well, what did we really, are these good investments or do we just encourage expenses? So just investment versus expense is something that came up. Yeah, two more that uh, one is sort of the flip side of all this is that we also want to make maintain the quality of our schools, the physical quality of our school is recognizing people move here for school. So there's a financial <coughs> responsibility to us as taxpayers to make sure to maintain those high those high enough standards. Which helps us in the long run. And then the last one was a sort of I think what I just heard a little a little variation of that, which is in my words, don't throw good money after bad. That's what I was um, you know, so in other words, <clears throat> don't make small investments that are going to have to be replaced in a, in a short period of time. Anything else? Andy, did, did we talk a little bit about what kind of modeling, what the, what the school, how the different teaching would be done, but also what the population would look like? Uh, the, the school population? Yeah. I don't think so. Why don't you hear, let's hear what you have to say. Well, this is part of, when we talk about modeling and investment, and we talk about the community about an investment, I think one thing that would be helpful would be, what, what is the school population going to look like over the next five to ten years? Mm -hmm. When we go out and talk about getting them 100% behind us, that would be some good, good evidence. Do you mean just strictly numbers, or do you mean numbers and needs? Well, I think because it's really numbers would be part of it, but just what, what's a classroom? What's a, a classroom going to look like uh, moving forward? Are we going to be building classrooms for, for the future, or are we going to continue to build them the way they were 20 years ago? It's 40 years ago. But in that population projections. Well, I, I, think that, I think that's important, too, because that's, that's something you hear quite a bit about. <coughs> So we thought uh, next on the agenda is that we would, there's a sheet like this that everybody has. It's from the needs assessment. And um, we thought we'd just review uh, what is on here. What this sheet is. So um, this sheet are the items that were uh, decided in the needs assessment that were of high priority. Um, and so we compiled them all together and, you know, they go from, I'll just read a few of them, door compliance issues, new cafeteria and kitchen, a big one, um, but um, gender neutral bathrooms <coughs> seem like it's a high need according to the study, roof compliance issues, again I'm skipping around here, fire rating and boiler room, um, Paint spray booth, exit with dimensions. Um, so that seems like egress to me. Um, I was thinking down.
um, provide metal dust collection system. We got that. Yeah, we I was just going to say, yeah, we got <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's great. Um, repairs at water heaters, new secure entrance and support spaces. That's a big ticket item as well. We can take off the provide ventilation for well now, so it's too long. Yep. Uh, security camera improvements, that might be some that we can take off. Is that for the high school, but that might be for the whole district. Um, so there's a wide range of that, and we just wanted to refresh people's memories of what, um, what was labeled and identified as the neediest discoveries from the needs assessment. We just thought that would be important data for people to have fresh in the front of their minds again as we moved on. Um, any questions about that? Oh, here's another one, metal shop lift. Yeah. We can take that off the high school. Mm -hmm. that. There's the good news coming out again. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So there were three. <coughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, emergency plumbing. Oh, emergency plumbing. <coughs> yep. So that's good news. Um, roof reinforcers. <coughs> We're cutting it down. We are cutting it down, little by little. Um, so, uh, was it just yesterday? It was. Um, Colby and Company and Scott Simon came and went with a few of us. Um, and provided this uh, document that's in front of me right now uh, with some potential hypothetical options. Um, and I want to reiterate, because uh, there have been comments about this before, and they mentioned this as well when they spoke to us, there are many, many, many options and possibilities of where we can go here. Um, these are just a few. They have to start with something, they have to grab a few ideas, and so these are just a few ideas that they have uh, presented to us. But by no means is um, our future restricted or limited to what is offered here. Um, knowing that in all four options, there's a 20% schematic design uh, level offer that would be required in order to accurately size a town bond um, and create the preliminary level of drawings needed for that. Um, there is, did we uh, add that? Is that on here? We've got the drawings for each one, but I don't see, yeah, I don't think I have that on my, oh, it's on the back. So on the back, as you go through and look at these documents, and I'd like to apologize for not getting these ahead of time, but we just got them, so that's part of the reason why it was so late in getting them to you. But the design, the options are written down, and then on the very last page is a small breakdown of the cost. And so when I mention the schematic design, if you look under option one, at some point down there, it's right there. Yeah, lower school schematic design. If you look under option two, there's another one. So that's what that is referring to. It's the, the work required in order to be able to effectively get the right information to put it out for a bond. Um, so going through the options, we thought we have about a half hour or so, a little bit less. Um, we thought we'd review some of these potential options, not exhausted options. Um, option one is a phase lower school or middle school building replacement. Phase one is a new school building would be constructed adjacent to the existing middle school and occupied temporarily by the existing lower school students and staff. The existing cafetorium and gymnasiums would remain in place until the second phase of this project is approved. Renovations will be made to the high school to address security, and other items and identified in the needs assessment report. The existing Pond Coast School would be demolished. Estimate phase one bond total is 39 to $43 million. Then there would be a phase two, 
and the second new building would be constructed in the previously occupied Pond Cove School location. The existing middle school and cafetorium and gymnasiums would be removed, and the new shared space would be constructed between the new buildings. The lower school students would occupy the new school in phase two, and the middle school students would occupy the phase one new school. So the estimated future phase two bond would be 42 to 46 million. This option so is shown conceptually in the enclosed hypothetical lower middle school phasing documentation. These conceptual phasing plans are identical for both options one and two. Um, this option would replace both the lower school and the middle school over the period of 10 plus years. The school construction in phase one would be occupied by 2023. Over a period of time, the phase one bond is paid down and debt capacity is regained and increased. This allows the town of Cape Elizabeth a path forward to replace one building at a time without the burden of replacing both schools at once. This option would preclude the use of some economy of scale by constructing both schools at once and require two separate town bonds. <coughs> So that's option one. Option two would be uh, concurrent lower school and middle school buildings replaced with an estimated combined phase one and phase two with a cost of 71 to 77 million. So this option is shown conceptually in the enclosed hypothetical lower middle school phasing documentation. Note that these conceptual phasing plans are identical. I've already said that like four times. Okay. <laughs> Phase one, a new school building would uh, a new school school building would be constructed constructed adjacent to the existing middle school and occupied temporarily by the lower school students and staff. The existing cafetorium and gymnasium would remain in place until a second phase of this project. Renovations would be made to the high school to address security and other items identified in the needs assessment report. The existing Pond Cove School is removed. Construction of the Phase 1 new school building would be complete and able to be occupied by fall of 2023. Phase 2 of this option, the second new building, would be constructed in the previously occupied Pond Cove School location. The existing middle school and cafeteria <laughs> and gymnasiums would be demolished and new shared space would be constructed between the new buildings. The lower school students would occupy the new school in phase two, and the middle school students would occupy phase one new building. Construction of the phase two new school building would be completed and occupied by fall of 2024. So this option would replace both the lower and middle school over a period of four years. So it's much quicker. Uh, the school constructed in phase one would be occupied by 20, fall of 2023, I believe, and School constructed for phase two would be occupied by 2024. Economy of scale by executing both projects under one town bond. However, the town would need to support a larger bond. All happening at once. So that bond would be that 71 to 77 million. Mm -hmm. When would the second school be completed under option one? Probably late in the 20, 28 time frame or something? 10 plus years. 10 plus years. In one, in option one, mm -hmm. we're, yes, correct. So it seems like to me, as I, from the conversation, that phase one and phase two are very similar, with the major difference of phase two is a much quicker process, and that. Option phase, option options. Option two. Yes, thank you. Not phases, options. Thank you. Option two is a faster process, and then the difference of option two is going out for one bond, whereas option one is going out for two separate bonds over a period of time. But it's essentially the same project mm -hmm. and similar phase. However, okay. more expensive if you break it into two options. Yeah. Or expensive because of the economy of scale. Yes. Is it's like 10 to 12 million dollars more for option one. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
and, and it's sticking to more with an increase in inflation over that kind of thing. Well, you wait for phase two. Yeah. 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 To balance that, in the in the meeting, we had that conversation of you, you can't predict the future, right? You can say that potentially it's more expensive because of work costs, which we know are fixed. Derek has mentioned that in the past, right? But um, the conversation of, was it you earlier, Andy, who mentioned um, that who knows what the state with it with a different governance, how how they may help out, you know? If we if, so, we were talking yesterday. It's almost like a poker game. We, you can't totally predict how it's going to be. If you wait, we know that the cost of labor are going to go up, definitely. The experts are telling us that. But it may work in our favor and it may not. And we really don't know that answer. Mm -hmm. But we do know that labor costs will go up. Option three <clears throat> is a frame off restoration and renovation of the existing lower and middle school estimated bond size is 53 to 58 million. So option three will require phased temporary, temporary relocation of all students in the lower and middle schools. Each school will not be occupied during its respective renovations. Due to the central heating system located in the middle school building, all students would be required to be placed in temporary classrooms while the HVAC system is shut down and undergone repair and replacement. It is estimated that the renovations would not be fully complete until the end of summer 2024. It is estimated that 40 portable classrooms would be required to support both student bodies for up to 18 months while this construction takes place. The budgetary quote provided for these portable classrooms does not include utilities, <coughs> electricity, heat, water, and IT or additional costs that cannot be calculated at this time. So the 53,000 doesn't include that, the 53 to 58. Oh. Correct. So they figure it would be about $2 million. Thousand million, right. Add a zero. Right. Sorry. It would be about $2 million if we had to get temporary college portables for 12 months, three million for 18 months. Yeah. So you're adding on, yeah. You're adding on. This option does not solve the issue of an inefficient building footprint and energy consumption. All walls, glazing, and roofs would be brought up to current energy codes and insulation values. However, the existing slabs that connect all the buildings are still in condition where there are high levels of heat loss, negating a significant amount of energy savings. Please note, the current valuation of the combined lower middle school is approximately $28 million. Due to the phasing challenges and burden of temporary portable student classrooms and the town maintaining an aging structure that is already nearly its end life, increasing costs of ownership and operations are too high to maintain and repair. This option is not recommended. Um, the other piece that I thought was interesting that is not written down here about the portables is location of where to place 40 portables in our district while this temporary solution would happen. And the education. And the educational impact of that. <clears throat> so moving on to option four, security and cafetorium upgrades. So this is an estimated bond of 26 million to 29 million. In April 2018, Colby Company and Scott Simon Architects were asked to present on a selective approach to address the security concerns of the front entrance and cafetorium at the lower and middle school. Enclosed in this memorandum is a copy of the proposed, is it in closed section? Okay. Okay, thank you. A uh, copy of the proposed solution concept offered at the Town Council meeting April 30th, 2018. This option immediately addresses the security concerns at the lower and middle schools, uh, as well as the issue with the overcrowded and inefficient cafetorium. 
The bulk of construction would take place during the summer months of 2020, uh, 2022, with the remainder of the construction taking place during the school year with limitations but in place to avoid disruption to the students and staff. The new cafeteria and renovated auditorium would be in use by the fall of 2023 or spring 2024. The new cafeteria will be located similarly to what is depicted in April 30th, 2018 presentation. During the construction of the new cafeteria, items identified from the needs assessment would be addressed where possible at the lower middle school as well. The benefits of building a standalone cafeteria structure is that if the lower and middle school are intended to be demolished and rebuilt in the future, the cafeteria would remain and be incorporated into the new building design, saving Cape Elizabeth from demolishing a recent structure and rebuilding again. Um, so just to clarify that, if this were to happen, this structure would be new, it would have the bells and whistles that we want, and if future renovations were happening, that wouldn't be disrupted. So the cafeteria portion of it, right, not to the entryways. If they were to incorporate, if they, if they were to move ahead with option four, they cannot create entryways that would stand alone. Those would be temporary. So we would be spending money to fix those up that could not last if further renovations were to happen. Um, and I just, you know, but, well, go ahead. Did you? Well, I was just going to say, and I mean, I noticed that they didn't put this option is not recommended, but I overheard some of the meeting. And it, what it does mean is that we would, if we chose option four, and these aren't our, these aren't our only options. I'm going to reiterate what I said. But if, if we were looking at these, if we chose option four, we would still have to choose option one or two in the fairly near future. It would be again <coughs> because that can address what still needs to be done. I also think um, part of why we did hand this out is this is not all the cafetorium and van freeway. And so option four doesn't touch on a lot of what is in the needs assessment that's in red. Um, so I'm, all the red items are not on this. Those, that's no, all red. These are all red. These, this this is, is all the red, red. red. Yeah, see it says red. No, I see. I mean, I yeah. just this, is this is complete. All. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to use. Sorry, I, Caitlin is sitting right here, so I'm going to just use the example that we've all seen in the band room and the overcrowding yeah. and that the, the major issues of the quality of the program. Will you nod your head? Yes. Right. <laughs> so that people know I'm not. I'm not talking out of my ear. Is that um, option number four doesn't even come close to dealing with. So it's a very small and it's a it's a substantial it, it makes a dent for sure in in um, some of the issues we have and it does deal with some of the issues but it's a large price tag for dealing with a fraction of what is happening and I don't mean that as opinion I'm, I'm stating a fact there so. I mean it wouldn't come close Caitlin told me a story about a student that I mean, so I have awareness of our ADA issues, but I was wishing you to talk about emergency egress, like from the top floor or the, um, the stage issue. With yeah, we have a student and Aaron has a top floor student in a wheelchair, so to get her onto the stage, she can't actually do it with a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. um, they move teachers' classrooms so she can access them, but even still, if they were a fire, she has to be carried out. Um, to bring her into recess, she goes right through the service entrance to the truck stop because that's the only way. The only way. Um, so that would make us have to Can I just ask for clarification because it does mm -hmm. have on the option four <clears throat> the cafeteria addition, the auditorium upgrades, and the security. That's actually nine million of the twenty-five million on the on the red list. I was wondering about that. Right. Too. So there is there is an additional unspecified. I'm curious what their assumptions are in terms of what this encompasses. Yeah. Three million dollars for high school renovations to be identified, and five million dollars for other things. It doesn't specify yes. what building. 
Actually, thank you. I do stand a bit correct, uh, corrected there. They did allocate because they recognize that there are things in the high school. Thank you. I'm sorry. I had forgotten that from the conversation yesterday. So I just want to point out what Jeff is mentioning again here. If you go to this sheet that has the list, it does talk about the $9 million, um, for the security and the cafeteria, and they do want to, there's in all options, there is, if you look into option three and option two and option one, there is three million allocated to the high school in order to keep the high school going for at least 15 years um, until that can be discussed. So uh, yes, thank you for pointing that out. And then five million in the bond to help deal with some other things on the needs assessment, but it certainly is not exhaustive. Yes, I appreciate that correction. Did you have something to say? No. Okay. Oh. Um, so the the graph at the very back of the um, packet, the visual, like I know some people are visually oriented, just really appeals to me, but I couldn't make sense of it with respect to the options that are presented. So I think there might be something funky about. The, um, the key, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I think it's either mislabeled or maybe I just can't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you want to speak to it? Okay. Hopefully that'd be helpful. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Based on how they described it yesterday when we were sitting down with it, was kind of like this is how they're looking at over the horizon of when when we would be going to uh, when we would be going to bond. Okay. So working from left to right, looking at this year, for instance, uh, the lower school would be that first uh, first sloping line that goes down. So that would be, uh, they were looking at going to bond this year, and then that would uh, that would go out, and then the and then yeah, the blue line, and mm -hmm. then in 2028, 20, they you know based on the phasing. Mm -hmm. uh, the middle school would then come up in 2028, 20, and then the high school would be forecast another eight plus years. <coughs> and so they'd be looking at that. Uh, I think they're looking at that by the time you would finalize all of your debt would be paid off by <coughs> 2052. Okay. So is the blue line option one, or which? The blue, blue line is. The blue uh, line has to be. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Is option one. <coughs> three bonds, and the blue line only has two crests. Yeah. yeah. That's where I got. And then so but shouldn't the blue line be option two then? Well, um, blue line terminates there about 2036 and pops back up again when you go to the high school bonding. Right. And then looking at another 16 years later, plus or minus is what they're looking at. Is, oh, so is the high blue school that's a, a future discussion. That's yeah. something we're yeah. not even talking yeah. about. So yeah. I see. So that's what's throwing me off. Okay, okay, okay. So this the picture prior to 2036 is what we're talking about today. Yes, yeah. right. exactly. Got it. All right, that makes sense. I've got a question. Yes, Marianne. Yes. Matt, it sounds like maybe you were in that meeting as yes. well. And my question is, there these orange dotted lines that go state allowed maximum debt level, state recommended debt level, are those the same debt levels that you were discussing last meeting with us? I think the top line is. So the 20, that would be 27 million? No, the uh, uh, state allowed maximum, that's up in the, and that's the so that's, 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 that's like 300 yeah, million like or the, something. Yeah, the all in number, I think, for 300 plus. The state recommended debt level. I'm not sure what they use for what number they use on that. Um, so I'd be, I'd be interested in finding out where the town council, the town manager's orange line is on this and actually having some numbers on the chart. Mm -hmm. I agree with the numbers, but is there any reason to think that they might not be the same as what we talked about last meeting? Yeah. I, only one that I think is the same one that we talked about last week is the maximum one. The one that underneath, I'm not sure what the metric is and the gap between the two. Mm -hmm. uh, you do notice that they do stagger a little bit, mm -hmm. and that says they, well, yeah. the, the thought is that over time the state valuations will change, so that number, you know, your ceiling changes as the town's overall assessed value increases. So that, that was the rationale behind how they did adjust those upward as they went through. Well, so, I think to address your question, 
And um, I think my, my assumption is the state recommended debt level is literally the state recommendation, whereas in the last meeting you talked about Forgive me because the audio wasn't very good. Um, the Cape Elizabeth, you got the recommendation from a third party yes. bond yeah. provider, and they yeah. said if you want to maintain your AAA rating, this is where you're best to stay with where we'd like you to be. Right. Yeah. So there's the Cape Elizabeth mm -hmm. level, and then there's the state recommended mm -hmm. level, which might not be the same. The gold standard, right? Yeah. Okay. So, Matt, are you saying that depending on whether it's option one or option two, pick a number, $75 million? Are you saying that, that, that based on this graph, you'd be looking to get a payout, a, pay, a full payback by 2036? Mm -hmm. And if so, why is that? Is that typical? I think you do. The municipality. To be honest, if you're looking at option the two school thing, you'd probably be looking at least 20 years out. So probably 2044 would be what I would think would be more realistic, or 20, you know, between 2040 and 44. You're probably looking at least a 20 year bond for option two, yeah, for option two, which is the cheaper of the two, yeah, that's 2044. If, if I was making the curves, that's where I would place it before terminating around 44, 40, between 40 and 44, depending upon when you went out to, to bond for the right. two, for the two, not the, the right. school one, wouldn't, wasn't even my thought process, right. And do you have any kind of rough idea what the impact is on the typical uh, resident? Well, I was doing the debt service while we were looking at it. Uh, Not to be, no one's going to hold me, hold me, hold me. No, I'm just holding these numbers, Andy. Just numbers. Uh, just numbers, sir. Come on out in the middle of May, we'll talk numbers. Well, the other, the other thing, of course, <laughs> well, I'll, 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 I'll see what you say. Uh, looking at a couple different ones o over, you know, if you're looking at option one, depending upon how you phase it, you could be looking at somewhere between 6.2 <coughs> debt service over 20 years. Uh, you know, per year allocation to pay off all that, or if you did it all together, about. Six million fifty thousand annually expending. Uh, if you looked at option two, you're looking at about five point three million a year for debt service annually for twenty years. Uh, option three, which is the frame off, you're looking at probably three point nine five to four million annually. And then option four, you're looking at just under two million. Annually. That'd be your debt service for. You know, my assumption on that would be three and a half percent of twenty years of bond in one year annual payment. Everything consistent with what a lot of usual terms are, but those are kind of the that's the brass tacks, kind of all that. No. But the resident, when he or she goes to the voting post, generally speaking, would know how much more their taxes are going to move up on average or median or whatever. Yeah, the town halls they would calculate that. We'd be able at to, some point. yeah, I'd be able to figure that out at right. some point. Right now, I yeah, you'd have to play around with yeah. uh, a little bit as far as growth and other things, but you could, I could figure that out. I'd have to put on the old assessor's hat. But. So the other thing that people haven't talked about is there's other things that the town wants to issue right. debt for. We've it, got is, that that isn't even even contemplated, contemplated yet. Right. Yeah, the whole picture. That's just one one pixel in the larger right. image here. It would also matter at our last meeting that there's also debt coming off during right. that period. Yeah, that's right. Right. So, so you have that's to make sure that that's... Too. Yeah, so you're retiring and you're also, you know, you get operational expenses that may come on board as well as other, you know, items that, you know, flow into that long-term CIP type of planning. But My understanding is those are more known entities than what we're talking about right now. Yeah. Many of those are, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I got a question here. I guess could for anybody. Uh, from what I've learned from um, attending previous meetings. Uh, schools are built for 50 years. Is that still accurate? So if a building is built by 2024 <coughs> under option one, 
and the debt is paid up by 2052. So that's like 28 years, right? And then after that, we'll have another 20, 20 more years of building life. You're right. Well, I, um, not to, I remember them saying specifically that the building materials and the way they build now prolongs the life of the new buildings longer than current buildings do. So I, I, I feel like they said 70 to 80 years. Mm -hmm. well, the materials play a huge role in what you choose to build out. Okay. Do you remember it's like the, 70 to 80? I, that's the number I have in my mind. Yeah, I mean, uh, the higher, there's much higher quality of building products available right now compared to what it was back in the 60s. Right. That will increase that. That would be more of an uh, engineer and architect. Right. We'll give you something Yeah, I just feel like if you build something, we should build longer than 50 years if possible. I mean, <laughs> Derek, did you want to weigh in on that at all? Yes. <laughs> no, I tend, to, I, so. yeah, I, I tend to agree. I think buildings now are built much more towards the 50 to 75 year range than the 40 to 50 year range that we're currently seeing in some of these buildings. But, but even if it's built, to the 50 to 75 year range, it's not a teardown no. at that time because this wasn't a teardown, right? It's still, it would be something that you could renovate or you do could. things yeah, to. Yeah, at some point there would be a cost analysis where you say, does it make sense to renovate? Where or we're we at just, now. We just, right, exactly. <laughs> so or we are now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you again to everyone uh, who came tonight and everybody who's listening on the TV. Um, like we mentioned, as we mentioned at the beginning, there are two more meetings set up. We have Wednesday, March 4th, uh, it'll be 6.30 again, and Tuesday, March 17th. What? Oh, we haven't set it yet? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have two meetings. I'm telling you now. The next two meetings, um, and it may take longer than that as well, but we thought we'd set up two more meetings. It's Wednesday, March 4th, and Tuesday, March 17th. Um, 6.30 here. Do we need to double check? Okay. Um, so it's 6.30 here. We would love it if those of you who have been participating can continue, but we understand that when you made the initial uh, commitment to this, that these dates weren't on. So if there's conflict or you're unable to attend, you can just um, email myself or Donna and let us know. Um, I feel really great about tonight's meeting. I think we got a lot covered. I think we had some important discussion that needs to be had, and I think there's further discussion. Clearly, I think we were starting to get into more conversation that I felt like could have been bubbling into another two-hour meeting that we don't want to have at 8.30 tonight, I'm prepared. So that being said, if you have questions, if you have comments, um, if you have uh, requests of what you would like us to discuss, um, Please email them again to myself or Donna, and we will take that all into consideration. And again, we will do our best to get you materials ahead of time to review, but um, we do the best we can. Um, so anything else? No. All right. Thank you again to everyone. We really appreciate it. There, we did send out um, or send around a little pad for attendance. If you could just, even if you were in the, uh, outside the group in the audience there, if you don't mind signing the pad.